Welcome everybody to our sacred space of Thursday prayer in our own places, but yet together, knowing that God is with, her, with us according to his promise where he says, wherever there are two or three gathered in my name, I am with them. So he is here with us. So before we begin, I uh, would like to share a song uh, just to prepare our hearts and minds and focus everything on God, keeping the distractions aside and knowing that we are in his presence. I'll share this with you. Oops. In your presence, Please let me know if you can hear. That's where I am strong in your presence. Oh Lord, my God, in your presence. That's where I belong, seeking your In your presence, that's where we belong, oh God. What a wonderful time. What a wonderful thought that at the end of the day, we can come to God and thinking about all that he has blessed us with. The gift of friends, the gift of family, 
And the nature all around so beautiful with flowers, greenery all around. And also so many things that at times overwhelm us when we think about our loved ones, when we think about all that is going on in the world and situations that overwhelm us. There is a book in the Bible, uh, not with, uh, with me, that I often read, and this is called Barefoot in the Kitchen. Barefoot in the Kitchen, and it has different Bible readings and reflections. I thought I'm going to read something uh, from there for our meditation this evening before we start anything else. And it says here from Joshua chapter 5, verse 14b uh, to verse 15. And it says, then Joshua fell face down to the ground in reverence and asked him, what message does my Lord have for his servant? The commander of the Lord's army replied, take off your sandals, for the place where you are standing is holy. And Joshua did so. Joshua wanted to know why this man was standing in front of him. What, do, what does he have for him as a message? The first thing that messenger told him, that take off your sandals, for the place where you are standing is holy. We might think, what does it have to do for us this evening? And here it reads like that. Pregnant, barefoot, and in the kitchen. Many of us have heard this well-worn phrase that was intended to keep a woman firmly in her allotted place. But it doesn't go down very well these days. Women are more likely to want to be slim, well-shod, and in the boardroom. Nevertheless, however successful we were, before we had children, many of us find ourselves in exactly that situation where we are at home doing the chores. If the domestic situation is not one you want to be or enjoy being in, the feeling of being trapped can be overwhelming. The resentment begins to grow and the chances of constructive personal use of that time decrease progressively. The early years of motherhood become something not to be enjoyed, but to be endured until we have the opportunity to return to the place where we feel we might find some self-fulfillment. For some of us, returning to work after having a child is a necessity and not an option. Yet, however enlightened contemporary society claims to be, Many of us find that they are stuck at home for several years until all the children are at school. 10 years can be a large chunk of life to while away, wishing you were somewhere else and is easily wasted if not used constructively. By the time I came to that realization, three years had gone by. I know that no time or experience is wasted in God's economy but think what he could have achieved in my life if I had allowed things to be different. It's no use crying over the past, though. It's better to lay a course for the future. I began to investigate how life could be lived fruitfully in an enclosed environment, because that's how I found mothering young babies, enclosed and isolating. With that thought in my mind, I consider how people endured a commitment to live a cloistered religious life. The only thing I had in common with such people was a basic commitment to my enclosed lifestyle. One that, like them, I had chosen out of conscious obedience. What I wanted to do was to find out how the way they enacted their commitment could help me in my situation, stuck at home in my own domestic cloister. It can go on for long and uh, so many things to read about. But we can pray at the same time that God, you have placed me in this situation 
wherever we are, not at the time of child rearing or bringing them up in Christian nurture, in faith that we have passing on to them, but in other places. We have been placed in different places of our roles, whether it is voluntary, self-giving commitment to the church, to the church family, and all the things that we do sacrificially for our community, for the calling that we have. I see somebody has raised their hand. I'm not sure. That's Ruby's phone. Ruby, would you like to say something? I see your hand raised, that little hand. Welcome. So accepting what God has given us as a commitment. But before that, we need to find out what God wants me to do first thing. First thing first, that every place, every role, every venue that we are in, even now, God is telling us that it is a holy ground. Take your sandals off. I don't mean to ask you to take your sandals off, but in the reverence, God calls us to focus on him. Do not be distracted. Of course, things are, we being humans, it is difficult not to feel distracted, but there is a calling. God wants us to unburden ourselves before him, before the throne of his grace, the holy ground, wherever we are, whether it is work, whether it is a place of worship, whether it's in the market when we are uh, you know, conversing with somebody in need, whether we are feeding somebody, giving just a cup of water, cold water in this warm weather, those things call us to acknowledge that place of worship because where we are, when we are interacting with people, whether we are in our solitude, it becomes our holy ground to acknowledge his presence, to praise him for who he is, to, to bring before him what is on our heart, what is bothering us, or what is even helping us to rejoice because there, there is no denying when we pray to God, he answers our prayers. That becomes our holy ground to give him thanks, to be grateful. So maybe this is the time we would like to spend some time in silence and acknowledge and take an audit or a review of this day and see what God would reveal in this holy ground for us to look within ourselves. and find out for ourselves what needs to be acknowledged before God, what needs to be confessed, what needs, needs to be asked for forgiveness. So let us pray. At the end of this day, there are a few questions before us. Was I resentful, selfish, dishonest, or afraid? Do I have an apology? Do I owe an apology of someone? Have I kept something to myself which should be discussed with another person at once?
was I kind and loving toward all? What could I have done better? Was I thinking of myself most of the time today? Was I thinking of what I could do for others? Of what I could pack into the stream of life? While you are thinking of these questions and myself as well, let's be careful not to drift into worry or remorse a morbid reflection. Because doing so, we might diminish our usefulness to others. So Lord, we pray. Please forgive us and tell us what corrective measures can I take in the light of your word? May every thought, every word, and every action taken, if it was done knowingly or unknowingly, Father, we ask for forgiveness. And we know when we come to you with a confessing heart, you forgive us in the name of Jesus because you are faithful and just. You purify us from all wrong, all unrighteousness. And that is the beauty of your nature. The nature that is loving and welcoming towards his children. We thank you, Lord, for this wonderful assurance that comes right from your word. Thank you for your forgiveness. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we thank you and we ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let us pray for those who are heavy on our heart, those who are not well, those who need our prayers. We, we need to pray for the world around us, our country, and everything else that is a matter of concern for each and every one of us. So let's pray. Holy God, we are on the holy ground of this sacred space because you are here with us and we are together with you, acknowledging you in reverence with you, Lord. We bring our prayers for others, feeling the pains and burdens of the world with confused minds and uncertain steps, but knowing that you are our God and you do hear our prayers. And so for the world we pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. The world is full of uncertainty, Lord. People's lives are full of uncertainty. Many do not know 
where they are from and where they are belo they belong and when where they are going and who they are may they in their uncertainty find a grounding and an anchor and a welcome through the words and the deeds of people they encounter Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. For ordinary citizens in Ukraine and Russia who struggle to comprehend what the war between the nations is all about, where it is going, what is the truth and what is false. For those fearful for their lives, for their families, for their well-being and their future. For those who simply want to live in peace and harmony, with food enough and a home secure with friends and neighbors. For those who have no choice but to fight and those who have to decide the next, next actions and work out their consequences. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are fleeing their homes, their countries, their cultures, due to poverty, persecution, greed, war and neglect. Those who see no future for their homeland, no peace, no comfort, no welcome, no hope, no joy, no love. For those who trek and sail with no belongings or support, crossing borders and cultures in uncertainty and desperation. We pray that those peaceful folk who travel and journey may find hospitality and welcome and space to build secure and safe lives and livelihoods. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who cannot flee their homes who continue to live in poverty and fear with war, treachery and starvation knocking at their doors. We pray for them, hope, kindness and love when so often they are alone and bereft. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who seek to make money, wealth and fortune at the hands of others, dragging them into despair and pain. For those who sell addictive and illegal drugs with little or no thought of the damage and harm and devastation they will cause. We pray for those who are addicted, whose lives have been damaged, often beyond repair who are on a per perpetual cycle of need and dependence driving them into violence, poverty and violence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for governments and leaders worldwide who share the responsibility for the climate and its changes, its health and its future its well-being and its survival for areas where deforestation is happening at an alarming rate against all sensible advice. For those nations dealing with flood and drought and consequent poverty and need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those we meet day by day, 
at home, at school, at work, when shopping, when walking, when talking, friends, family, neighbors, and those who we have named before, and those whose well-being we are so concerned about. May they all see and know in us the presence of a loving God, the welcome that as Christians we are called to give, a smile, a listening ear, a hand to guide, a touch of comfort, a word of prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And all the prayers of our hearts, spoken and unspoken, we leave at the throne of your grace because we know that you have promised, cast all your cares upon me because I care for you. This, these are your words, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Now we can unmute ourselves and say the grace together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Kat.